Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Let's talk about possibilities. We have a tendency to focus on what's not working and on all the ways something could fail. Yet, we don't give possibilities the same energy and attention. But what if we did? How would it feel to make space for what's possible? To allow yourself to feel good and let go of the stories that no longer serves you. In today's episode, my guest Elizabeth Marks talks about embracing the journey and how motherhood led her to a beautiful unraveling. Elizabeth is a luxury wedding photographer and the founder of Almond Leaf Studios. Over 16 years, she's captured hundreds of weddings around the globe and now helps other wedding professionals build profitable, sustainable businesses with the work-life balance they've only dreamed possible. In today's episode, Elizabeth shares how inner work allowed her to embrace and integrate her sensitivity into her business how creating space to have the awareness on what's working and what's not has made a huge difference in her life and business, her journey into motherhood and what her children is teaching her on almost hitting rock bottom in her business and leading her to reevaluate the way she was operating. The realization that it's not about the destination and what's become possible when she started to lean into her strengths, align her business to her, and let go of expectations. Come join this nourishing conversation. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm so excited to have you. I know we talked a little bit about our emotions and how sensitivity can be a very powerful tool in our business. I'm excited to talk about that even more. But to start with, tell me a little bit about yourself. Who is Elizabeth Marks? Oh, thank you for having me. First of all, um, I am a, a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats. Um, I am a wedding professional. So I, I am a photographer. I shoot um, fine art weddings and I have a husband and I'm a mom to two kids and um, have really just been on a journey really the last few years of really kind of diving deeper into um emotionally, like emotional connectivity in our business. I think for so long, I was kind of living out this narrative that I had where I was supposed to be, be brave and tough and strong. And, you know, if I, especially if I was going to prove myself as an Mm -hmm. entrepreneur that I needed to work really, really hard to deserve the things that I would get. And that meant a lot of times like powering through and, you know, working all kinds of crazy hours, even when I didn't, I knew deep in my bones and in my body that I I shouldn't, that I should take a break. Um, And so I've really been on this journey recently of diving into that. Like what is possible for us as business owners when we can kind of stop and live our businesses from a place of ease and flow? And I think, of course, that naturally carries into all aspects of our life. And I think for me, it's been this really beautiful journey of learning to understand the integration that happens with that, where I think... I'm just totally on a soapbox already. <laughs> so hopefully you're, you're going with me on this journey. Um, but I think so often we like so easily can seg- segment like the different areas of our lives. And I used to feel like, well, this is the work me. And this is like the playful me that not a lot of people get to see. This is the sensitive me. This is, you know, there's all these different versions of me. And I felt very private and very... Um, cautious with how I presented myself online and wanted to show up in a certain way. And so I think to be able to really allow people to see and know you on, on all of that levels and to be able to represent yourself truly, like as your, your actual true self, um, 
publicly takes a whole lot of deep inner healing work. And so it's really, really been a, a journey of diving deep into like, why do I feel afraid of certain things? Or why do I feel completely distraught that that launch didn't go the way that I wanted? Or why am I not having what I think is success in the way that I imagined it? You know, there's just so many questions that come up. So anyway, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot there and I'm already <laughs> rambling and on a journey with it. But no, yes. totally. Because I think it's a lot of inner work. And one thing that I've noticed the most, when you have your own business, it's almost as if all your insecurities or your doubts are reflected back to you because you're putting yourself out there. Yeah. And I love how you talked about doing that inner work and healing. At what point in your business and your career, because you've been in photography for, mm. was it over 15 plus yeah. years? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. At what point did you kind of turn the lens inwards? Yeah. Good question. So, um, the, I mean, it's a, it's a clear, like, you know, marker in the ground, you know, there's like this pivotal moment for me and it was having my daughter when, um, my, had my daughter, she was my first, um, we have two kids now, but when I had her, I am such an all in person. Like I dive deep into something when I, I can be really hesitant to like, do I want to commit to this thing? Do I not? Am I, am I sure? Am I not? If I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to be really cautious, but once I'm in, like I am in, like I am all in, you know, at all yeah. expenses. And so I was kind of that way with my business. Like once I decided, like, I'm really going to do this thing, I was all in. And I, like had very unhealthy habits to be honest, like, like living, eating, breathing, like barely sleeping my business, you know, like all right. the time to the point where I had very little, uh, social life and, you know, felt guilty taking time away from like editing photos to go hang out with a friend for a couple hours. I can remember some like very, very distinct and defining moments with that. Um, and so when I, when I started, when I found my partner, David, uh, my husband, when we got into relationship that already was like really ruffling some feathers for me where it was like, whoa, 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 hold on. Because he wanted to spend all this time together. And I was kind of like, listen, I love you. I'm so into this, but like, I don't have time. You know, mm -hmm. I had this, like my business came first, if I'm really honest about it. And I, I had to really work through that, like allowing and creating space and recognizing like, actually it is okay. And it sh I should have the freedom to leave work at two in the afternoon, if I want to, to go hang out and go have a fun adventure with this man that I'm dating, that I am in love with, you know, like that should be a part of entrepreneurship, but I wouldn't give myself that permission. And so that was kind of the first giant step, but then the huge, huge pivotal moment for me was having my daughter because I went from all in on business with like sort of allowing time and space for my husband <laughs> to, <laughs> to like having this newborn baby that like literally can't survive if you don't take care of them all the time. And on top of that, like my journey into motherhood was not a, an easy one. It was a fairly traumatic event for me. And, um, on, to top that off, she was a very challenging infant as well. And so I just had this like, whoa, what just happened? Kind of a reality in my life where like everything kind of stood still. And I was just all in on like caring for her and making sure that we did everything we possibly could to like help her find her way as a tiny little newborn baby, you know, and help her begin to navigate the, and I'm, I'm an Enneagram nine. And so I need peace at all costs. And so a lot of times that meant like sacrificing what to me felt like the more urgent or more important thing, which was my business, because it was still so deeply ingrained in me that that came first, that I would like suppress that to care for her. So I had all of this tension, um, throughout that first year of her life where I had so much anxiety and tension because I always felt torn. I felt like I was failing everybody. I felt like I couldn't be there enough for her. I couldn't be there enough for my clients. I couldn't be there enough for my husband. I couldn't be there enough for, to tend to anything in my business. I felt like I was just letting everybody down all the time because I put really high expectations on myself. Um, and so that really was such a huge, huge defining moment of my life because it, it kind of forced me to realize like, wait, first of all, our business began to actually crumble and began to suffer. Mm -hmm. We got to the point where we actually talked about, do we need to, to sell everything, go live in a van for a while until we can get back on our feet financially? Because we have no business coming in a year later. We were like, holy crap, what's going on? Like, 
well, we didn't care for our business and we weren't bringing in clients. At that point you were already working together. We were. Yeah. 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 We already had been for like five years. I want to put a pin on motherhood because I love where this is going, but I'm also curious as in how you started your business, why photography and how did David come into partnership with it? Because I think that's a really interesting transition for you as well, allowing someone else into your, your passion almost. Yeah. So David is very much a like man of all trades. (laughs) Like he doesn't feel like even now is not like, doesn't feel like this is like his zone of excellence or his like, this is what he's designed to do in life. You know, he, he's not really sure if he even has that. Um, So he saw an opportunity to like join me in this adventure and this life full of adventure where we could travel the world, you know, documenting weddings. We used to do a lot of destination weddings before kids. Um, So he saw this opportunity and he was like, that's, sounds fun. Let's do that. And so I kind of looped into it. I totally thought he was going to like come along and be my, uh, assistant photographer, like yeah, help me out. I was and he, say that, yeah. he was like, no, nope. <laughs> <laughs> he really fell in love with video and wanted to do video. So that was definitely a transition as well. Like learning to work together. Um, yeah, but by that point, you know, it was, it, you know, it was kind of every day, but we had no so backup. We had no support on financially. Like if I didn't give, I had this belief of like financially, we're just going to suffer and our business is going to crumble if I can't put in the hours because without me working crazy intense long hours, we're never going to make any money. So that's been a huge, huge barrier for me and a block that I've had to be working through. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put another pin on that. <laughs> <laughs> so what drew you to photography? Tell me about your love or photos. What kind of photography do you do specifically? Yeah, I so I consider myself fine art, which basically means I'm really fascinated and curious with like the human face and helping people find more flattering angles. So it's really interesting. Every uh, facial structure has a more flatter, like a, a, a ma- more masculine side side of their bone density of the jawline typically, and then a more feminine. And what I, what I mean by that, I use those words very cautiously. What I mean by that is just one tends to be a little bit more, um, like of a sharper curve. And then the other one tends to be a little more of a softer, more rounded curve. And so for women, you shoot into the masculine to accentuate the feminine typically, and then reverse is true for, for men. And it's just one little tiny example of like, I'm just so curious and interested of how, how somebody can photograph you to help you look and feel the most beautiful that you've ever felt. And that there's actually a science behind it. There's actually like method behind it. So I'm always looking for really it's, it's the celebration of mostly women (laughs) because usually we're focused on the bride on a wedding day, you know, (laughs) how can I help her look and feel just exquisite and so beautiful and empowered on that day. And she, she puts a tremendous amount of trust into my hands, um, allowing me to kind of help her make sure that she's captured that way, you know, make sure that I'm not going to get her like triple chins and her, (laughs) you know, like awkward body movements that we all have because everybody has them. Um, so I'm always really curious and interested to like help people, Uh, move throughout a day and and be reminded of like, Hey, don't forget, you know, like drop your shoulders, take a breath for a minute, like get into your body. You know, I know it's been a stressful morning, but let's just take a minute. Let's just pause and breathe for a moment. Yeah. And a lot of times when people have a camera in front of them, they don't know how to act. Like like, I've taken a lot of photos and when it's my turn, like, Oh, and my husband's yeah. like, I'm trying to take a portrait of you. I'm like, I don't know what to do. He's like, why, why can't you just be like normal? I'm like, you're right in front of me. I think like, should I respond to this? Should I ignore you? <laughs> totally. Totally. I would say models have, they are so amazing at what they do because they make <laughs> it look so natural. Like it really is a skill set to be able to feel and look natural in front of a camera. It's, it's quite challenging for most people. What is your favorite part of your job? your business? (laughs) Creating beauty. It's just, for me, it's always about creating beauty. I am not somebody who, you know, was like, there's like a movie. I can't even think of what it was where the wedding planner, I think is what it's called, where the little girl like grows up just dreaming about weddings and living in this world of weddings. And, you know, I remember watching that and just being like, yeah, that was so not me. (laughs) Like here I am living that life. And that was so not me as a little girl. Um, But I think when I've really done some reflection on what is it about my job that I do love, it's, it's one getting to serve people, getting to really step into, um, one of the most stressful days of their lives. You know, we don't 
use that language when we're talking directly to <laughs> clients sometimes, <laughs> but we say, you know, it's emotionally charged and, and it really, it can be very stressful. It can uh, have a lot of high intensity with the energy that can play out, as, especially as the day unfolds. And so I love getting to walk into that space and kind of feel the room and read the room. And again, that's kind of that Enneagram nine-ness where I can kind of like feel it out and kind of immediately know, okay, this person is causing a lot of stress and maybe we need to like find a way to help that person take a break or go run an errand, or, you know, maybe we can find a way to give the bride a little space for a moment to take a breath, you know, or maybe she needs to cry. Maybe she just needs to, to enter into all that she's feeling for a minute, cry it out and then go get her makeup redone, you know, like to kind of be able to read the, that energy as I move throughout the day and really be like kind of a guiding force you know, almost like a friend or counselor David jokes sometimes that I'm like the yoga instructor of, <laughs> of wedding photography. <laughs> um, Cause we talk a lot about with our clients, like helping them really enter into their bodies and enter into the experience they're having. Because I think given that it is such an emotionally charged day, it can be really easy to kind of experience the day from like up here and not really be present in your body. And so the more we can kind of create environments and space throughout their day to like, take a breath and like, you know, just like, just look around, like, look at this beautiful view today and look at, you know, like, you, look how amazing your dress looks and, you know, just kind of helping them yeah. like notice and be aware of what's actually happening is, it's just a really huge gift. And then beauty. I just, I love creating and capturing beauty. The artist in me will always celebrate that. So. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. It's almost like your, your way in is through photography, but you provide so much more. It's comfort and presence because for my wedding, it wasn't even like a crazy wedding. We were just had a small ceremony. I got sick the day that I woke up and I had a full blown oh, no. cold. I'm like, is this a bad omen? I think I was just like <laughs> holding on to like stress and tension and families yes. were meeting mm -hmm. for the first time. And it was just mm -hmm. taking on that so much. And looking back, I'm like, I think I floated because I was on like cold meds, but also because so much was happening. I was enjoying it, making sure I was talking to everyone, but it was also very out of body. Yeah. Yeah, it is. For a lot of people, it's very out of body. I think a lot of people, myself included, you know, we got to the end of our wedding and it was kind of like looking around like, wait, we're, we're done. Like this is the yeah. whole thing happened already. Like what, what <laughs> like it just, you spend so long pouring all this time and energy into building and creating this event that is, you know, you're taught it's supposed to be like the lifetime you know, event of your dreams. And there's a lot of pressure around it for it to happen a certain way. And then, you know, you go through it and you move through it and it just happens quickly. It just happens just like any yeah. other day. And you get to the end of it and you're like, that's it. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think like, what happened? <laughs> yeah. I think anytime we can pause to kind of, you know, find some space to, to really have a presence where we can be more present within our bodies and like the awareness of, you know, what am I feeling right now? Like there's times where I have to stop and just like take a breath and, or even get up and dance or, you know, depending on what, what kind of energy is happening, like being able to, to find and create the space to do that, to have a moment to really be aware. Thank you for sharing that. It's so important. Like bring our bodies along for the ride. We keep yeah. forgetting about it every time. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. So do you think that that part of you that you get to, you know, sense the energy and lead and almost guide the people around you in an event was something that, was it the sensitivity, the part of you that you thought, mm. we talked about it in a way, let me see a good way to refrain. We talked about being labeled too sensitive or that we felt mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. And I guess the question is, at what point did you realize being yeah. aware and sensitive was actually like a superpower yeah. instead of like the negative stigma around it? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I do think that a lot of creative creatives, especially tend to have this, like, um, I don't know if it's a hypersensitivity or just, you know, an extra sensitivity, or I don't know what kind of language to use around it exactly. But um, I do think we tend to be highly sensitive and I I think what's beautiful about it is that 
you know, you ask the question of like, kind of almost like what point did I recognize that in my journey? Cause I've been doing this for so long. And I think the beautiful part about being who we are is the reality that sometimes you're doing it without even realizing you're doing it. And that is how, you know, that's who you're designed to be. Because I think for so many years, I was already doing that in my business and didn't really have awareness of just how magical that was or how much me doing that meant like really altered and shifted their day, you know, helped them have a different experience because of my presence there. And, you know, I think from my natural inclination is like, I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to, I'm more comfortable being like the fly on the wall in the background and just like documenting whatever's happening. So to step in and learn how to like be bold in what I'm seeing and help take permission to kind of guide things in certain ways, um, was a journey to get comfortable with that. But I think all along I've been doing it without even realizing it. And I think it's just such a, a testimony to the reality of that. Like we are who we are, like we are, we are designed to be who we are. And it's the beauty comes in unfolding and uncovering the things that block us from being more fully who we are instead of like, if you unblock something, you change who you are. Does that make sense? Like, it's almost like you're just allowing more of the river to flow in that direction where maybe there was a stream, but you already were built. You were designed to have that stream flow that way. You know, it's going to run through you, but then when you unblock certain things or you remove old beliefs that no longer serve you, you're able to remove them and allow that stream to open up and allow it, that river to begin to, to run deeper. And it begins to serve more people and you feel more aligned. You feel that freedom. You feel that energy kind of, or, you know, divine connectedness, like flow through you and out into the world. And it just feels amazing for everybody because it's a it's you showing up as authentically you, you know, and the world needs, I think the world is just longing and craving people. I once heard somebody say so many people are, everybody is born originals, but so many people die as copies. And that just really resonated with me where I was like, oh my gosh, it's so true. Like I, how often I'm tempted to like notice something that somebody else is doing and go, oh, that is really cool. I think I could do that too. Or like, I could do my version of that instead of going, is that what I'm supposed to do or what I want to do or what I think it's, it's doing the work for me has been really diving deep into that. Like not, not being just blinded, you know, like putting blinders on to the people around me, like still being aware, but also like staying in my lane and figuring out like, but but what feels aligned? for me? Like what's the next step for me? Not because I see somebody else doing it, not because somebody else over here taught me this marketing tactic or, you know, this strategy, but like what feels really peaceful and good to me in my business? Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, that was so beautiful. And when you said we're already doing it without knowing, that really resonated with me because yeah, like I think growing up, there was this really funny anecdote. It was in my advertising class and I knew advertising wasn't for me. I didn't like like the tacky part of it or just how they were really pushing to sell something that wasn't really aligned to other people. It was making them feel bad. But I had this copywriting class with this professor that was really wise and deep and he's won a lot of awards, but he was super humble. He didn't talk about any of that. He just talked about the power of words. Like it didn't matter what you're talking about at the end of the day, it's about how you communicate. And I did so horribly in his class because I had to use words to sell something I didn't believe in. So I couldn't, it didn't, Mm. you know, align to me. But in my like review, he was like, you know, you are such a bright light. You are so sensitive. And I always took that as a bad thing growing up because I was made fun for being too sensitive. But he's like, I don't think you're made for this industry because it's a cruel world out there. And I can see you maybe as a career holding people's hand on their deathbed and helping them go to the other side. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it felt kind of like, an, you know, it was so funny. I didn't know how to take it, but I took it as a compliment because for the first time he recognized my sensibility mm-hmm. as something good. And it's just 
yeah. not something to say, hey, you you suck in advertising or anything like that. Yeah. And that just helped me shift perspective. And like you said, I wasn't trying to do anything than being myself. And once yeah. I embraced it, the river flowed. Yeah. And it's a part of me. But also like how beautiful that you were able to even hear that because I wonder, like, had you been in a different mindset or different space, you might have heard those same words, even in the same tone of voice with the same tenderness and care and not been able to receive it as a positive thing. Um, And so I think that's just a reflection of what I know of you to be true, which is that you have been so willing to kind of go to those sometimes challenging places, you know, and do the work of like, hey, what's here for me? You know, how do I uncover beliefs that maybe I don't need anymore, you know, or that, you know, like you're saying, like you were taught that, that to be sensitive was a negative thing. Um, so I just think it's really amazing. And I want to call attention to that, that you were even able to hear that it was a positive thing, because I think that just shows that you have done some work there too. Are you ready to create space for ease and alignment? I've created a free starter guide to help you go from frazzle to focus. It's a guide for the overwhelmed go-getter who's eager to find more ease, clarity, and alignment in their lives, so you can quiet the noise and strengthen your connection within. After all, we can't align what we don't know is misaligned. Simply grab your free copy at wholeandunleashed.com slash guide. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate it. What were some stories that you realized you were holding on to as you did that inner work when you realized you were pushing and, you know, things weren't flowing as smoothly. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm still there, <laughs> still going through it. Um, I think that has been a part of my, the part of the, the awareness or the recognition recently has been understanding that maybe there's not some like destination that I'm supposed to arrive at. Maybe it is just enjoying the journey. Maybe the journey itself is like the beauty and it's the, I don't know. It's, it's what it's, it's the thing, you know, like there's no like end game. And, um, I think giving myself permission to, to just be along for the ride on that and not feel like, Oh, I just need to like hurry and work through this thing to get to that. You know, I think all of that just kind of sheds light on some of those, um, deep beliefs that I had about working hard. And, um, I think it's been really fascinating. There's been some things that have come up recently for me that have really shed light on the fact that, I really wanted my dad's approval specifically. Like I, I think that he, he loved us very much, but he didn't know how to connect to us as children after a certain age. I think that he had a very interesting experience of his own father. And it was very much like the man leaves and he, he works hard and then he comes home and to have dinner with his family. And then he, he goes and relaxes basically, you know? And so when we wanted his attention and kind of craved that, the only time that I can really remember, um, having some really amazing, like one-on-one conversation was either about, something I had accomplished usually, you know, whether it was, I don't know, playing soccer in high school, or if it was like academically, or, um, you know, it was usually about something I had accomplished and he felt, I I could feel his pride when I started my business. I could feel that he was so supportive and encouraging of this in a way that I, I hadn't really experienced him before. And so, I think somewhere in that is all mingled and mixed up with this belief that in order for me to prove to him that I can do it and that I'm worthy of having the success that I want, that I have to work really, really hard because he worked really hard for the little that he had. And that's kind of the generational stuff that was passed down is this thinking that like you have to work really long, hard hours and, and really long put a a lot of challenge on your own body, you know, um, to be able to see and witness and experience the kind of success that you want. Um, so I think that's a huge one for me is really kind of working through that and, and starting to understand like what's possible, like what, what, what could actually be possible if I, is it possible for it to not have to be so hard for what, if it is possible for me to, you know, put some, different systems in place or hire some support and, and actually spend more time with my kids and go on walks from, you know, once in a while, like 
that's just mind blowing to me from who I was a few years ago. You know, I just felt like every, every spare moment I needed to be accomplishing something in my business. Um, so that, yeah, that's one of the big ones that's been coming up for me. That's such a profound realization too. And being pulled in so many directions, just professionally in your relationship. And then I know we talked a little bit about motherhood at the beginning. Did you burn out at any point? Like were you spread too thin? Yeah, good question. Um, I, yes, I think the answer is yes. I don't know that there was any like big defining moment where I like recognized hey, I'm burning out on this. Um, to be honest, I think that we recognized, like, if there was a moment that I would say was like a defining moment that I experienced burnout, it would be about that point where it was like this rock bottom moment where we were having to like consider everything. Like, do I, I started job searching for cubicle jobs in tears, like crying as I looked at it for pages, just going like, I'll do whatever to support my family. Like, I just need to make sure that we can pay our bills. And, you know, I give up all of my dreams. I will literally take a job consciously that I know I'm going to hate just to provide for my family. Like, I remember having all of these, like, I'll do whatever it takes. And so I think the burnout also kind of happened simultaneously as I began to work really hard to figure out a way out of it. Um, so I don't think that there was like a, this moment and then began a new healing journey. It kind of all was just intertwined and kind of evolved. It, yeah. I almost, I pictured like a snowman, like you're rolling up a snow you know, like the snow and it's getting bigger and bigger. And then somewhere along the lines, it's like it, the whole thing just kind of evolved into a completely different form where all of a sudden there was some shedding of some things and some building of some things. And all of a sudden this new shape exists, you know? And I think that's kind of more what I would, the analogy I would say, like what it looked like for me in my journey. Yeah. And how did you, I guess for a lot of people, how did you get out of that period? How did you transition or how did you pick yourself together and not really because did you end up getting a cubicle job did you end up giving up or yeah no I didn't good question though um no I I we had to dig really deep and just ask some really hard questions of ourselves you know questions like you know, what's my purpose in life? And like, you know, what am I meant to do? And like, why, if I could craft a life that I wanted, like, what would it look like? And, and then to believe that those things are possible. And so I think in all of that, in those, you know, that kind of rock bottom moment, there was this, I don't know, this awareness that began to develop where it was like, I, I don't want to give up doing what I'm doing. I'm going to have to basically rebuild my entire business because right now it's just on the decline and it's crumbling and it's not working. So, and I don't know how to fix it, which usually I did know how to fix things, you know? And so I felt this like total place of surrender of like, I don't know how to do this, but I know that I'm capable of figuring it out. And I remember just like bawling to David and just telling him like, I don't know how, but we'll figure it out. Like it's going to work out. It's going to happen. Like we have to keep doing this job that, that feels aligned for us. Like, I just cannot imagine doing anything else. I know I did it once before I was a graphic designer mm -hmm. for a huge magazine. And, um, I, I stuck it out for like a year and a half. And I remember even by the end, I had mapped out paying off my student loans. And if I had stuck it out for like nine more months, I would have been completely debt free of all of my student loans. Cause I was paying off like over half of my paycheck every single month was going to my student. Loan. I had like no expenses, you know, oh. it was great. It was wonderful. And I, I quit nine months before because I got to the point where I was like bawling on the way to work every day. Just like, I hate this. I hate going to work. I hate this life. I don't want to do this. And I finally got to the point where I was like, no, I can't, I cannot keep doing this. I have to be true to who I am and I have to leave that. And so I, I had that experience. So I had this, like, I can't go back to that. Like right. I, I will, if I, if I really have to, like, if we really end up like I need to go work at, you know, retail or a restaurant job or, or do some, anything to like, just bring in some money. Um, I'm more than willing to do that, but yeah, I just knew that I, I knew that it wouldn't be something that we could do long-term because I just, I know that I'm not designed for that. I know that yeah. I knew there was more for me. It takes so much courage to acknowledge that because I think a lot of people are in 
positions, places, relationships that are not in alignment to who they are, but mm. we can logic ourselves and make totally. stay in places. Like I stayed at a job that I knew it wasn't for me, but I just kind of followed the signs and I stuck it out for a couple more years, a couple of months more months until my body was like no <laughs> I started yeah. getting insomnia getting sick my body's like you're getting out now so that was my cue to leave yeah. but yeah we override our emotions so often and people think I should be happy I should love this but honoring your your feelings and listening can open up to so much more so once you've realized that you know you can't go back that you'll do what you can to get the means to support your family but you're not giving up what did that open up to? What possibilities, what opportunities came? Oh man, it's been amazing. I, yeah, I, I there's, again, there's not like some, like I've arrived, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, there is no marker, arriving. <laughs> but there's like so many little tangible things that I've been able to like pause and celebrate. You know, I have a team yeah. of people now, which is like mind blowing to me. <laughs> like I don't do any of my own editing anymore. I, um, I have people that do a lot of my social media. I just have incredible support, which frees up my time and energy to not only do the things only that I am amazing at in my business, like, and, and stick to those things because half the time I would spend so much energy, you know, designing something or, um, I don't know, working on some other project that I, it's just not my area of expertise. And so now it's like, I feel like everything is growing exponentially. Like it's just mm -hmm. been crazy because I'm, I'm handing off I'm, I'm letting go of some control and I'm handing it off to these people that are incredibly talented that can honestly do it far better than I can. <laughs> like they're amazing at what they do. And it's just been so empowering because it allows me to stay, to spend my time in my business doing what I am best at, but then also to have more time and energy to hang out with my family and have my kids, you know, get to, you know, be able to say like, Hey, I feel like taking them on an adventure today. Like, let's go do this. You know, like I can, I don't need to get done the seven things that I needed to, or I can do them tomorrow or, and to not feel, I used to be able to make that choice, but it would always come with this like boatload of guilt and pressure mm -hmm. where I would be in the moment and couldn't really enjoy it. And so I think, yeah, watching my business grow and watching so many internal changes and external changes begin to happen has just been incredible because I'm able to like step into those moments when I want to do it. And I want to be with them and hang out and to really be present. And then also recognizing that there's times that I'm with them and I start to recognize that feeling sooner where I start to get this like anxiousness mm -hmm. and I realize, oh, I actually want to be working, which sounds horrible, but I, and I think people don't really talk about it that much, but I, I think yeah. really the reality is that there are times where I'm with my kids and I'm like, they're driving me crazy. And I actually want to be working on my work because I'm really excited about what I'm doing. And so the awareness of that and then allowing myself permission to be able to do that too. And it, you know, of course, when yeah. childcare is available and David can be helpful and you know, whatever, there's a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's been really, really fun. Thank I will also say that. Yeah. I, I'll also say it feels a little bit like we're like on this cusp where all of this like momentum is building and building and building. And it's about to like have this big external like explosion almost of like, like in a good way of like growth. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like just internally been building and building and building. And so there's not a ton outwardly that looks super, super different other than I have a team, but again, most people wouldn't really know all of that. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I've been telling David, I'm like, I feel this momentum. Like it's, I feel like things are about to totally change in our business. So yeah. I hope I'm right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you brought so many interesting points. Like the fact that alignment is internal, like nobody mm. else can see other than how you feel. And that's mm -hmm. so important because it's easy to compare ourselves to other people and see they're doing all these things and maybe I want to do it. And the second point that I really appreciate you bringing is admitting that you want to work even though you're spending time with your kids because I have so many friends that are amazing mothers but they also are passionate and ambitious and they yeah. love working and they feel so guilty feeling that they want to work when they all you know totally so thank you for bringing that up how did you started to embrace that part as well No, that's not better, is it? I was trying to get that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't want you to have to edit that one out. But no, no that's like, that totally didn't really fun. help. We'll see the time. Okay, it's kind of funny. 
um okay so um yeah I don't know if there was that's a great question and I'm not sure if there's like a clearly defined answer for me with that I think it's just something that I here's what I notice about myself and about my growth in a lot of these areas that there's not a lot of times like a big aha moment for me. It tends to be lots of little tiny realizations and that those little itty bitty things build up to a big change, if that makes sense. So sometimes it's little tiny conscious thoughts of like recognizing, like for me, so I know you and I've talked some about this, um, like my physical body will start to like trigger something. So I can start to feel typically right here in my chest. I'll start Mm -hmm. to feel this little bit of like anxiousness is the word that I want to use. And I'm trying to think of like how I would describe it. Like it's a a tension, a tightness, um, maybe even like a warmth, but not like a pleasant warmth, like a like almost like an angry warmth, you know, like an energy that doesn't feel comforting would be like, like yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it happens kind of, yeah, like right here. And I get it all the time. I, and it's usually like the first little sign that my body is trying to communicate to me of like, Hey, pay attention. (laughs) Something's up, you know? And so I've gotten to the point where when we weren't living in alignment and didn't really know how to enter into that or how to even bring awareness to that, where that anxiety would build so intensely that both David and I, like when we went through that kind of rock bottom experience, like both of us would just be up in the middle of the night, almost with like panic attacks, you know, where it was Mm -hmm. like, like, how are we going to feed our child? We only had one at the time. Like, how are we going to feed her? Like, are we gonna have to sell our house? We bought this house thinking we would live here forever. Like, are we going to have to sell it? Are we going to have to get jobs that we hate and, you know, have a life that we don't enjoy? And, and, you know, it just, all of this fear and this anxiety that would kind of creep in about it. And so I think really, I mean, I feel like this is such a buzzword and we've used it already so much, but awareness (laughs) is like the biggest, you know, the ticket, because just bringing awareness to that first little inkling of that sensation and not waiting for it to build to something greater has been completely life-changing. You know, I think you said it once uh, when one of our conversations where you were talking about like the whisper versus the yelling, you know, that you feel like you're, you're going to get the message. The message will be delivered to you one way or the other. Like if your things are off and you're not really like living in alignment with yourself, that will be communicated to you. Now you can choose if you want to listen to the, like the little whisper, the hint and like lean into that and be curious about that. Like, huh, what's that? And so from my version of that physically would be like that little bit of like, you know, heart angst, that tightness. When I start to notice just even a little bit of it going like, huh, okay, hold on. What's going on? Like, why do I feel this way? I don't know. And sometimes I can't even tell you why. Like I can, I've told David a number of times where I've said, I don't know. I feel a little anxious, but I'm not sure why. And I'm trying to figure it out. And sometimes even just saying that it's like releases the ability for my mind to start to figure out what's going on. Or he'll say, go take a walk, you know, go like find some space, go for a drive, take a bath, do something to like, cause he knows it, if I'm feeling that it's just going to escalate. And it usually turns into some kind of big blow up or, you know, like I usually end up just having a really short attention span with my children and then I snap at them or, you know, it's like, it doesn't go well for anybody. So it, it really serves everybody in my, my community and my family, um, for me to really honor that little whisper, that hint of whatever is off and out of alignment and bringing me back into that alignment. That's so beautiful. And I love how you talked about it can also escalate to full anxiety because I think there is a difference between honoring what you're feeling and being curious, like taking a walk and just giving it space to do whatever it needs to do and also spiraling with it, which Mm -hmm. is something that a lot of us do because we're so mental and rational and we try to be rational. Oh, maybe I'm feeling this way. And then it just gets worse. So like having the awareness of what you need as well, because everyone's different. Maybe somebody wants to actually sit and think about it and that helps Mm -hmm. them. Maybe not thinking about it also helps them. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I think for me, usually either a walk or honestly, journaling seems to be like one of the best ways for me where I just put pen to paper and I've had to learn to not be my own critic, like not let the Mm -hmm. kind of judge or critic part of me 
be present in that and just write like, and just nobody else is ever going to read this. And I'm just going to write like stream of consciousness, whatever comes to mind. And sometimes in those little writing sessions, like what comes out is mind blowing where I'm like, that was in me. Like, I didn't even know that I had awareness of something like that. You know, it's just been really, really powerful. So I do think it's different probably for a lot of people, but for me, um, journaling has just been so powerful. Do you have any tricks or do you set the mood in a certain way to journal? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So in, in an ideal world, yes. Um, I, tend, <laughs> yes. I tend to be the messy one in our relationship. So like if David knows that I need some space like that, he's so sweet. And sometimes we'll like come out to our office and like light some candles and set some music and dim the lights and make it like really, really beautiful, magical little space to enter into. Um, most of the time for me, like I you know, there's like stuff all over the bed and the, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. And, but I'm really good at like kind of closing in and, and zoning out of that. And that is something I'm working on because I do think that for me, even in that, if I'm really honest, I think sometimes it's, it's that I don't think I deserve the time it would take to clean it up and to create that kind of space. And so when somebody does it for me, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is <laughs> like, holy crap, this is incredible. Like I am wow, that makes such a difference, but I don't often take the time or energy to honor myself in the same kind of way. Um, so I've been practicing that a little bit more, trying to, trying to learn to do that more and and to take the time and recognize that like, yeah, that 10 minutes of cleaning everything up and lighting some candles and setting some music, like actually makes a huge difference. So Mm -hmm. So yes and no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the little things. I mean, life happens. Life is in progress. Like my ideal place to journal would be at a cafe, but everything is closed. It has been closed for months. That's yeah. my ideal working space, not working from home. Working from mm-hmm. home, I'm so distracted, but you know, you have to adapt. And even when you're not able to, you work with what you've got. And it's yeah. beautiful that you know there's something that can make you feel so great, but you also get to get what you need. Yeah. That made sense. Oh, I feel like we could do a whole nother episode on like that space. Like where's that space for you? Cause for me, yeah. that space is like on the side of a mountain. I've been hiking for hours and there's no responsibility, no cell phone. No, like I've had some of the most transformative moments of my life all happen just out on a mountain or in nature, you know, alone or with a friend, but usually with a lot of quiet. So if it is a friend, we have to like kind of honor this like code of silence so we can both like have some (laughs) internal reflection. Um, And my life right now just doesn't have a whole lot of spaciousness for that because I have two tiny children that have a lot of needs, you know, and a (laughs) husband and a business. And um, yeah, so I think, yeah, that we could have a whole nother conversation about knowing where that place really is in your life and what that space looks like, but then also finding ways to incorporate it in your everyday. Because I think if we just wait around for that, I think that is a huge part of probably going back to your question about burnout. I don't think I realized that I just kept longing for those moments. I kept longing for like a day to get away and hike all day or be by myself or a weekend away to just process. And I started to realize in the longer that I've entered into motherhood that like, that doesn't always come. Like sometimes it can, but it's pretty special when it does. And if I'm going to really learn to live in this beautiful way of being aligned and honoring who I created to be, I really need to incorporate little moments every day instead of waiting for these big moments or these big events, you know, to happen. Totally. Like people wait for Fridays or vacation. That's kind of like yeah. how it translates to in the nine to five world sometimes when, yeah, totally those little moments in the day. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about your online programs because you're also an online educator. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> you have um, your latest course out, The Art of Booking. Uh, booking. Yes. The Art of Booking. Yep. Tell me a bit more about it. Yeah, actually, I had a conversation with somebody this morning that was so life-giving. Um, he's been in our course for a little over a year. He said he noticed because one of our email correspondences, um, I sent out an email shortly after they joined, basically saying like, put a note on your calendar right now for one year from today, because I want you to look back and see how different your life is. Like, I want you to have something measurable because I think it's important for us to 
honor and kind of measure and acknowledge and celebrate the, the things that we have achieved with big and small in our lives. And so he said, I actually happened to notice that this morning that, that, that was September. And, you know, it's been a little over a year since we've joined. And he was like, I just have to tell you our life is totally different. Like he said, my wife was bawling like the day before we bought your course. And she was kind of like, I don't know if I even want to do this. And that was our entire livelihood. And we were ready to give up on the whole thing and close doors because we just didn't know what we were doing wrong, but we knew it wasn't going well. And so we just had this beautiful conversation where he said, you know, he just like dove in and binged all of it. And like, he was like, this makes so much sense to me. Um, so it was so life-giving to hear that because I think that is such a great representation of not only what I hope for, for people to go through this course of this program, but also where it has come from. Like it was developed from that kind of rock bottom moment of where we were in our lives. And then what got us from there to back to a thriving business where we were booking weddings and booking weddings that feel more aligned than we ever have in our life. Like not just higher price points and, you know, book more high end and luxury, but like people that we just really enjoy working with. Um, and so it's really the system that like helped us get out of that place. You know, where I, I kind of shared that I had this awareness of like, okay, David, like, I don't know how it's going to happen or how we're going to figure it out, but we will, like, we will somehow figure out from point A to back to a healthy, thriving business. And so this is kind of the system that did change everything. So that's what I teach now in the course. Um, so it's really for wedding professionals, um, mostly photographers, wedding photographers looking to grow their income and actually have work-life balance too, to, to really free up their time and energy too, to create a system that allows them to not feel so tied to their desk or their computer all the time. Yeah. And it's also, I, I think I saw an Insta story where you talk about the sense of worth and I can relate as a designer. When I quit my job, I, I saw a lot of people, other designers and freelancers who wanted to take as much jobs as possible and discount all their rates. Yes. Sense of worth is such a huge topic that we don't even know how to tackle. Totally. That's the whole first module that I make them go through is like figuring out their pricing. We've had people that have come through it that, one guy, his name is Corey and he's given me permission to share this. He did the math because I have him like go through like some simple math on things. He's like, I did the math and I just realized I'm paying myself $5 an hour, $5 an hour. And I've been doing this for years. And I've obviously let my passion for what I want to be doing, like overpower the fact that I'm just giving away my time. And he was like, I could have so much less stress in my life if I just went to work at a fast food place and have more money and less stress. So I I'm really, that's kind of the foundation of it for me is like, you have to know, because it's one thing to say, Hey, raise your rates and then like start, you know, attracting people and hopefully it'll work out. But it's another to help you figure out this is what your time is actually worth. Like time is a currency too, not just your money. And so if you can start to see how much time you're investing in what you're doing, if that, if you can see that as a currency, it kind of changes everything. And you start to have, you know, I call it, there's a, one of the numbers I have them figure out is what I call your don't go lower than number, (laughs) where I don't want them to ever go lower or discount a a wedding service, you know, below this number. So that way they're never tempted. They know if they go below this number, they are literally showing up to just give it away for free because they want to. And if you choose to do that, that's fine. But even for friends and family to like honor, this is what my time is really worth. And I'm not profitable if I go lower than this number Mm -hmm. based on the goals that I have for my family and for my expenses and, you know, all of what's involved. So yeah, I think worth is a huge, huge, huge part of that. Yeah. I like how you make it tangible, like, because sometimes there is industry price, the price that everybody charges and you should feel comfortable. But like you mentioned, self-worth or like inner work about our worth takes time. Like I, yeah. when I started um, the mastermind, I didn't realize I didn't even believe in myself. I didn't think my value in coaching was there because I didn't have the years of experience like I did with design. I had 10 years behind mm-hmm. me, so I could stand behind that. But the new thing that I was teaching, it's life experience. How do you package that? And working through that made me realize, oh my gosh, value, time, everything that I'm putting into it. It really helped me shift things into perspective. And having a number that you can't go lower helps when you're so tempted to, especially also with like creatives, you're supposed to 
there's this like myth that your passions shouldn't pay for your bills or that you should discount it or it's not as valuable when you're good at it. That's why you should be paying even more. Yes. Oh my gosh. I could, yes. I get so passionate about it because I'm like, artists are probably the most underappreciated, you know, and on and, and so many levels, you know, designers, artists, like painters, photographer, like all everybody, because I think that our creativity that we offer the world is something that is so subjective that it, it feels uncomfortable maybe to put a specific value on that of this is. And so I feel like when I started to shift the way I was thinking about it, instead of just like, here's my skill, or, you know, I have a four-year degree in this, or I've had all these years of experience or, you know, all these little like external things instead going, you know what, this is the time that I want to invest. This is how much I want to be working. And this is how much I want to make. And now here's all my expenses. Here's all these other things that would factor in. And then let's do the math and figure out what do I need to charge to be able to start to reach those numbers? Um, it just made it so much more tangible for me too, to be like, right. So anytime that I go lower than that number, I need to actually choose, do I, would I actually rather spend my time doing that event or being with my children playing that day? Like I'd probably rather be with my children, like going on a hike with them or to going to a brewery to, or going, you know, like doing something yeah. to go enjoy my family. But again, that kind of, I, I need to have those markers in my life because I know that that drive those beliefs for me of you have to work hard to deserve that are, are still, they're still in process of like reframing and re reworking those beliefs. And so I, if I have these kind of markers or these almost like bumpers in a, you know, bowling alley, like I kind of have yeah. bumpers in my life where I need like these little markers of like, whoop, bumped a little farther over there. I need to come back over here, you know, like, yeah. whoop, yep, there's a bumper. So I have to kind of like set these bumpers up in my life oh. to be able to have a marker of like when I'm starting to get off track. Yeah, that's, oh gosh, that is amazing. I love it because so, so often we judge ourselves for knowing something, but not fully embodying it, but it's mm -hmm. a process and having that bumper is like such a compassionate thing. It's like having training wheels. Yeah. Maybe one day you'll <laughs> be able to not use them, but it's just yeah. so much more uplifting and say, okay, this is my boundary almost. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also a cool analogy because I think like if you throw that ball down the bowling alley, and you don't, your, your goal is on your lane, right? And you want to hit the little pins. I'm not a huge bowler. I don't know why this is coming to <laughs> mind, but, uh, <laughs> but, but visually it's making sense right now. So we'll go with it. Um, but it, like, if you were to like trip and fall and your ball goes to the next lane and it happens to go all the way down that one and hit those pins, like that's not necessarily wrong. It's okay to hit a different destination, but it's, really getting honest with yourself of like, where, where is the destination? Where are the goals? What kind of direction do I want to be moving in my life? And am I actually moving in that direction? And again, I, I don't mean the goal as in like, there's a destination, a final whatever, yeah. but, but are we, are we moving towards what we want in life and what we want our life to look like? Or are we just kind of haphazardly like tossing things into the air and hoping they yeah. land in the okay way. Going to <laughs> another know? lane. Yeah. Going to another yeah. lane. It's kind of like, yes. yeah, stick to your lane. You can go wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. You can set that in any direction you want, but just being again, conscious or kind of aware of like, where am I heading? And am I making tiny little choices in my life every day to move towards that direction that I see for what I want my future to look like? Mm. That is beautiful. What a beautiful way to just summarize life, <laughs> like a metaphor oh. for life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that's true. Well, I wanted to kind of wrap this up with some rapid fire questions. Sure. What's the best compliment you've ever received? Oh, man. Um, I had two that kind of simultaneously popped into my mind. I keep trying to like debate, but I, one that I have really beautiful eyes. I've really, I've had a compliment when I was really little that I, for whatever reason, like stuck to me. Um, and I remember like, as I grew older, just feeling like, yeah, 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 I do. You know, like kind of learning yeah. that, like, huh? Yeah. Somebody else appreciated something about me. That's kind of fun. And then the other one, just that I, I care, which is so interesting because 
it like, again, goes back to like that narrative of being too sensitive, but I've also heard it in a way where it was like, no, that's a, that sensitivity is a good thing that I care deeply and, um, will do anything for the people that I love, you know? And yeah, I think that that was a really beautiful compliment too. A book that's changed your life. Oh, the latest, well, two, I'm, I'm just going to not give you one answer. Yeah, yeah, give just keep, hey, if two <laughs> pops up, give it to yeah. me. <laughs> I'm greedy. <laughs> so the most recent one has been The Big Leap. That one has been really, really transformative for me. Um, really kind of understanding like the those kind of upper limits of like what I've ever experienced before and, and beginning to recognize when those habits are happening has been just powerful. And then there's another one that... Um, is called The Most Beautiful Thing I've Seen. And it's by Lisa Gunger. Um, sh- that book, like she writes so beautifully about her experience. And it that book literally started a new trajectory for me in my life and gave language to so much of what I was already feeling and experiencing, but didn't have language for. And so that one was incredibly transformative as well. I'm adding it. My, my book list is growing all the time. I just want to like freeze time and read. <laughs> I know me too. <laughs> me too. What does coming home mean to yourself? Hmm. Uh, I think that it is slowing down in life. Um, being intentional and just creating spaciousness. I think that I am somebody who needs and craves spaciousness and have spent so many of my years, my adult years, uh, filling it with busy. And so I think that's part of the journey and the process for me of like just learning to slow down and create space. What would you like more of? (laughs) <laughs> chocolate is the first thing <laughs> I know yeah. I was like chocolate <laughs> chocolate <laughs> bourbon I don't know <laughs> um <laughs> oh I mean the next thing that comes to mind is time but I feel like that's also kind of one of those things that I'm trying to reframe in my mind of Me like too. I don't need more time actually there's an abundance of time and I can choose how I want to spend that um yeah I mean I time with my kids, time away from my kids sometimes, <laughs> you know, time to just like, I, yeah, I think I really am an introvert. And so being in a family unit with kids, small children that have a lot of demands um, and we don't have full-time care, David is our full-time mm-hmm. care, especially during a pandemic. Um, it, it just, it's full of challenges with that of like, how do I, so I think, yeah, finding time and space to for some self-care of, you know, reading a book and just yeah. having a day to do whatever I want where I'm not meeting other people's needs. It sounds yeah. pretty fantastic. We should also do another episode on time. I, I'm we trying should. to reframe it after reading The Big Leap and yeah. just noticing how, yeah, we can put ourselves in position where we feel like time is running out and it's not. Yeah. So it'll be yeah. a follow-up. <laughs> totally. Let's do it. <laughs> where can people find you? Um, almondleafstudios.com or on Instagram at almondleaf. I am in my DMs pretty often there too. So yeah. And then we're starting a new podcast soon that will be released soon as well called I Might Cry. (laughs) We're talking more about- Can you talk a little bit more about it? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk a lot about um, emotional awareness and bringing that emotional awareness into- um, our businesses. So really the connection of mind, body, spirit, all of it kind of wrapped into business that you can't segregate those things, but they're all intertwined. And so giving yourself or giving value and attention and love and care to the growth of all of those areas of yourself, even as a business, um, time spent is, is invaluable. So yeah, well, mostly guest interviews talking a lot about, you know, everything from how our human bodies work and how we can, they can, you know, like your experience of like having your body begin to, to tell you, communicate to you like, Hey, something's up, something's off. Um, everything from that to some business tools and, and systems and strategies, um, as well as, um, you know, therapists and 
really kind of diving into like bigger, deeper heart matters too. Yeah, I'm excited. I look forward to it. Thank you. Do you have any other offers and programs? I have a few other small ones, but the one that we're really focused on right now is the art of booking, um, just because it's kind of been the baby. And so we've been, I have a couple others in the works where a six week program that we're developing right now and some other kind of deeper mindset stuff as well, um, as like portfolio reviews and all of that, that will be involved. But, um, but right now the one that's like out there and launched and, and rolling and humming along is the art of booking. Okay, awesome. I'll link everything, the books, um, your awesome. website so that people can find you in the show notes. Thank you so much cool. for joining me for this awesome Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.